Hi guys, Luke LaFontaine up here at Cold Steel in Ventura, California. I'm coming to you guys today to talk to you about our German longsword. Now, this sword has not gotten a lot of love from you guys, and I am dumbfounded as to why not. This is a really, really super quality sword with quality fittings. Uh, you know, we tried to make something that was semi-custom, that was high-end, that is strong, it's practically bulletproof, and you're getting all that for under 500 bucks on the internet. You're not gonna beat that anywhere. You're just not, period, and you know it. Uh, so I wanted to talk about this sword a little bit today because I wanted to point out some things in case you guys didn't know, you know, give you a little more information on this sword. This German long sword, unlike other swords, this puppy is completely forged. This is a real sword that is forged out. This is not done by stock removal. This is a super strong blade forged out of 1090 or 1095 high carbon steel. Uh, it's stiffer than hell. It's got a really serious cross section. The hilt components are solid cast out of stainless steel, so they're not gonna rust and the leather is really high grade quality on the scabbard and on the grip. Uh, in terms of period points, you know, I tried to design this sword so that it hits all the bells and whistles, but on that end, guys, you know that nobody's gonna design the perfect sword for you. You're not gonna go and look at any other sword manufacturer and go, oh my God, they made the perfect sword exactly the way I wanted, exactly designed the way I like. You know that what you see is what you get and if you're a real sword enthusiast, especially if you're into HEMA and you collect swords and you've been doing this for decades, if you haven't already, you gotta start learning how to modify your own swords. That way you get exactly what you want. If you see something and there's some part of the hilt you don't like, you disassemble the sword and you make it the way you want. You change the grip color, you change hilt components, you change the finish, you can blacken it, brown it, you can give it a satin finish, you can cut parts of it off. Uh, customizing is kind of one of the really fun things to do if you're a sword enthusiast and a collector. I know a lot of you guys don't, but I didn't know how to do it when I started 30 years ago, but I learned. Hell, I'm building swords now as well as collecting and using and teaching and performing in films. You know, I'm first and foremost labeled an all-around sword nut. But I want you guys to be able to enjoy the things you purchase to the fullest. And Cold Steel busts our butts to make stuff that is almost bomb-proof but still serviceable. One of the things that I've really been working hard on up here at Cold Steel is getting our weights and balances right. I've been working on the overall weight of the sword, the overall feels of the sword. Our entire sword line has come down in weight. They're much more usable, they're much faster, they're much more lithe in the hand now. And one thing that I've heard a lot of people say about this sword is it moves great in your hands, because it does. Um, it's a great piece. Now, I have gone on the internet and I've heard some rumblings about the side ring. So let me just clarify up about the side ring right now. The side ring is mounted pretty much the way a nagel is mounted. It's got a square steel block that goes in through the hilt of the sword. Now, period wise, that's historically accurate. Not every single side ring or double rings or hilt ports were welded on. I've gone to museum exhibits all around the world. I've seen side rings that were peened on, that literally had pins holding them on. So in terms of historical accuracy, this is completely historically accurate. Now, to the second point, strength-wise. Guys, we've hit this thing with a hammer. We've hit it with other swords. We've almost had a guy stand on it. This ring isn't going anywhere. It's not gonna bend. It's not gonna come off. It's not going to rattle, so if you're actually dulling these blades and wanting to do HEMA sparring with them lightly, they'll hold up to that. So it was important to me to try and hit all the bullet points of making you guys a real period designed 
longsword that was different from everybody else's. Yeah, a lot of people have got very, very generic hilts and they're very, very easy, easy to use, left and right-handed, but that's not how all swords were. And so I tried to make something different. I gave you nice, long, sweeping s coins so that in your grip, that forward coin protects the hand and the rear coin protects the forearm from sword cuts along with the side ring with this nice German pummel. This blade, like I said, is fully forged out, razor sharp and stiff. This thing's got a cross section on it for thrusting and cutting. As well as, look at this scabbard. Thick, thick, thick molded shaped leather. Nice tip, comes with sword straps. It's a serious, really nice high quality. You're not ever gonna get this quality of a sword for under 500 bucks. You wanna spend $2,000 on a sword that comes without a scabbard? Be my guest. I get it, I understand it, everybody wants what they want. But you're gonna wind up paying $2,000 or $1,500 for a sword that doesn't come with a scabbard when you can get this whole sword with a high quality leather scabbard for under $500. I don't know what the heck you guys are waiting for. Now, we don't make tons of these. We don't make these in really, really high numbers. So my advice is pick one up. If you want to modify it, modify it. You want to blue the hilt, blue the hilt. You want to take the side ring off because you don't like it? Take the side ring off. Make the sword yours. But in terms of an entire sword with this strong blade that is forged out and the entire hilt, the fittings, the leather, the scabbard, another sword like this is not going to come along. And you know what's going to happen? A year from now, a bunch of you guys are going to be scrambling around on the internet fighting over these things. Oh, I'll pay $600. I'll pay $800. I'll pay $1,200. Well, why don't you pay less than $500 right now and pick one up so that you're not suddenly scrambling trying to find one a year from now when they're really scarce and everybody that's bought one is holding on to it for dear life. Uh, like I said, hey, I tried to make a really good quality sword that hits all the bullet points for historical accuracy, but still is a 100% usable sword, which this is. Like I said, forged out blade, this sword will cut, this sword will thrust. It's a beautiful piece for anybody's collection. And it's like I said, I tried to take it and make it of a hilt design and a style that's not copying everybody else's swords. Come on, you guys, you've got 8 million cross-hilted long swords. Why don't you go for something a little different? And like I said, you can always customize it if you want to. But now we're gonna take all my German and Italian long sword techniques, which are really rusty, and put them to the test with this sword. Let's go have some fun. Advantage of this German longsword. 
Look at those cuts. I'm barely cutting from my arm. There isn't a lot of English on that thing. This is a stroke that I can deliver at speed in combat. Um, that's your arm hacked off. For a sword that's designed for thrusting, it cuts pretty darn good. Look at that.